Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Xanthus Gaming. Today we're going to be showing you a very cool Death Knight build that can actually go quite deep into Endless by utilizing some skills that are normally not within his kit. Let's go ahead and get on into the abilities without any further ado. Ravaging Strike and Carnage are your starting skills with this build. Carnage will apply map wipe bleeds to enemies as a pulsing slash nova originating from the Death Knight and going out to the edge of the screen. Ravaging Strike will convert bleeding stacks into hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is an amped up version of bleed. Not only does it apply the bleeding damage, but it also has a 40% chance to apply the damage again whenever the enemy moves. This actually deals decent damage in and of itself, but the main reason we are taking it is to amp up our Scent of Blood. Scent of Blood increases your attack speed by a flat 10% and an additional 1% per stack of bleeder hemorrhage. It does have a cap, however, the cap as well as how much it scales per stack both scale with damage and potency for Scent of Blood. You can actually scale this pretty much to the moon. It's really good. While Ravaging Strike and Carnage both do de decent damage, like I said before, their main point of their role in this build is to be a support. We have another support ability as well. The next and final support ability that we're going to be taking is Slash. Slash applies Vulnerable to the target, which amplifies the damage that they take from our abilities. Vulnerable works better with harder hitting abilities. Vulnerable will add 10% additional damage onto attacks per stack, capping at 12,000% increased damage. It does, however, suffer diminishing returns after 80 stacks, up until it gets to the 12,000% increase. Furthermore, it's important to know that Vulnerable gives no bonus for skills that hit for 50 damage or less, and it gives full damage bonus for skills that hit for 1050 or more. Both of these numbers are before any damage modifier, so they are the base damage of the skills that you see on your screen right now. Since Vulnerable is the, expan is the advanced version of Exposed, it also has an additional effect on top of this. If the skill striking the target with Vulnerable crits, then the bonus from Vulnerable is doubled. As such, crit and crit damage are a high priority with this build for this reason, as well as a few other reasons we'll get into soon. Subdue is one of our two main hard-hitting abilities. It does 50 base damage and an extra 10 per stack of bleed or hemorrhage. With no stacks of bleed or hemorrhage, Subdue gets no bonus from Vulnerable. But once you start to stack hemorrhage and bleed, it will scale up quite high. In fact, if you're stacking, hitting a target with at least 100 stacks of bleed or hemorrhage combined, then Subdue will get the full 100% bonus from the damage scaling from Vulnerable. Heroic Strike does 650 base damage and as such gains 65% damage bonus from Vulnerable. On top of this, Heroic Strike applies stacks of Confused. Confused is a very interesting debuff. It has a chance to reduce the damage you're taking by reducing the enemy's chance to hit by 0.5% per stack. This does cap at some point, but it's unclear precisely where it caps at, but it definitely caps because otherwise if we stacked enough of it, the enemies would never hit us, and that simply is not the case. However, in addition to this damage reduction, it also has a damage healing component too. Confuse has a 50% chance to proc a flat damage bonus of 500 per stack whenever an enemy attacks. Remember, that's 500 per stack. This damage can scale with damage modifiers and does make up a substantial portion of your damage, especially with how quick you're going to be attacking with Scent of Blood. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the runes that we're going to be utilizing. We're going to look at each one in depth. We take Reroll Mastery for a couple reasons with this build. First, it can be difficult to find the exact abilities that you need, especially because there are so many swing abilities in the game. As such, having reroll mastery is very important for finding exactly what you need. On top of this, since we can go quite deep into endless, having extra rerolls as we push into the 200s on our level range is really important for finding the correct passives that you want to use. The next room that we take for this build is Executioner. Executioner provides a 
5% damage multiplier per debuff on the target. We apply 10 to 11 debuffs with this build, providing a 50 to 55% damage bonus depending on if we have bleed and hemorrhage on the target at the same time. Generalist would provide a 50% damage bonus, so it is a fine option as well. I just chose to go with Reaper instead. You can feel free to change it to Generalist if you prefer. Next up, we're going to be using Swing Mastery, and it is a linchpin of this build. It is actually the main thing that holds this build together. It adds an extra swing, it adds extra swing skills that are locked normally to other characters' weapons, as well as other characters' specific, unique prestige skills. By taking this, we unlock the ability to get swings that really we shouldn't be able to have on Death Knight. Specifically, we are taking this to gain access to Slash as well as Scent of Blood for a massive attack speed increase and our damage multiplier with Bone. We take Weapons Expert to start so that we can start with Carnage to give us an easier ramp up into the full build and faster initial kill times to make it easier to progress past that first stage which can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Finally, we take Multicast mas multi Mastery to increase the chance of long multicast chains happening. I love this one, but you could also take Generalist instead, or you could take Crit Mastery instead. I personally prefer Multicast because just a little bit of Multicast early on makes a big difference, and later on, it makes a huge difference. Your mileage may vary. Feel free to change that up if you feel like it. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at passives next. For passives, I've done something a little bit different this time. I've kind of broken them up into priorities. Top priority means, obviously, take above anything else. Conditional means that depending on the situation, you would want to take the stat sometimes and other times not. We'll go more into this with each passive in a moment. Secondary, you always take unless there's a conditional or top priority above it and Tertiary are still good, but they are a low priority. For each stat priority, we are assuming a green rarity at minimum on each. If you instead get a white stat, so for instance, white lethality instead of green, you would drop its priority level by one. If you get a blue version of the same thing, for instance, lethality, you would increase it by one. So a blue lethality would increase to top priority from secondary or drop down to tertiary priority if it's white from secondary. Any synergies not listed as top priority are automatically considered tertiary priority. Still good to take because they do provide extra damage, but they're not essential to the build. For instance, even though poisonous blood is not listed on the charts, it's still a very good ability and it's just not higher priority than anything else that's already listed. Okay. With that disclaimer and explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and get into each of the passives now. Exposed Weakness makes it so that when we crit, we can apply Wound, and it gives us a 50% chance to double debuffs whenever we apply them. This scales our attack speed even further because it makes us make them bleed even more. <laughs> bleed. Hypothermia provides a 50% chance to slow, or 50% chance on slow application to apply a stack of Fragility, multiplying our damage by 3% per stack up to 300% damage bonus. This applies to all damage, direct or otherwise, so it does scale the damage of our dots. Impending Doom has a 50% chance to apply Blade Dazed whenever we apply Doom. Dazed increases our chance to crit on a target, and if you go above 100% crit, you can double crit. If you go above 200%, you can triple crit, etc, etc. Crits are very important for us because every crit we get has a chance to apply bleed. Gangrene applies additional bleed stacks 50% of the time whenever we apply fragility, and like I just mentioned, Brutal Strikes gives our bleed 50% chance to apply whenever we crit. Next up, we're going to move into the conditional priorities. Conditional priorities, you want to stack cooldown reduction, generally, for Relentless and specifically for Scent of Blood until you have 100% uptime on Scent of Blood. After you get to 100% uptime on Scent of Blood, stop collecting cooldown reduction because we are going to scale our cooldown reduction like crazy through Scent of Blood and it just frankly overshadows what you could get anywhere else. 
area we want to scale until Heroic Strike and Subdue. Heroic Strike, Subdue, and Slash cover at least three-fourths of the screen. After that point, area becomes more or less a dead stat. Agility is actually super important, but very conditional. You have to really play based on what the enemies are like at your present moment. Because we don't have a dog roll, we need to make sure we can always stay ahead of the enemies. The further you go into Endless, the faster enemies attack and the faster enemies move. As such, each stage you go deeper into Endless, you have to stack more and more agility. However, it is very possible to accidentally stack too much and not be able to control your character very well. So you have to kind of go based on how it feels for you. However, for me, I generally stack up to about 150% on the first stage. Once I go into Endless 1, I stack up to 175, Endless 2, up to 200, and then after that, I just kind of adjust based on how bosses attack. The further you scale into Endless, again, the faster they attack and the faster they move, so you have to match their scaling on speed. Frailty is a must-take stat for us, but you should only take one rank of it, and then after that point, ban it. The same could be said of Touch of Ice and Faithful Strikes, Take one rank of each and then ban them. For ban four, I would suggest going with Fire Shield, as you really have no reason to take this for the fire. I mean, you really have no reason to take this. For the final ban, either take a variation of Leviathan or take something that's giving you area because again it becomes a dead stat after your slashes hit the full screen. Alrighty, let's go ahead and have a look at secondary priorities next. Lethality is very important as we want to get 100% quit crit as quickly as possible. Not only because it provides us with a great damage scaling boost, but more importantly because it provides us more and more bleeds through brutal strikes. Merciless then amplifies the damage whenever we crit, and if we go above 100% or 200%, this becomes exponentially better. Multicast will double or triple or even quadruple our damage by causing us to cast multiple times each time we cast, and since we have multicast mastery, we are more likely to get big chains. As such, multicast is a very important stat for us. Behemoth is very important as well because it scales our HP, and you will be taking some incremental chip damage on this character because you don't have a dodge roll. So having that HP to help buffer it out between stages is very important. Finally, we take Powerful Strikes because it scales our Confused Damage for Heroic Strike, and it also scales literally everything else, including Dots. For Tertiary Priorities, we are going to be grabbing Resilience as it provides us with a straight damage reduction for each hit we take. Indomitable, we will be grabbing because it increases our chance to dodge attacks altogether, and Magnetic helps our pickup range and our rate of XP gain. Remember once again that these priorities are based on the assumption that you're getting green level upgrades. For each level above green, increase the priority by one. For each level below green, decrease the priority by one. So on and so forth. Hopefully this guide has been helpful for you all. Make sure you like, favorite, share, subscribe, comment down below, and either way, thank you for just being here today. Have a wonderful rest of your day.